Hey there, Cowdog here. First off, I'm going to apologize for my video quality since I'm just doing this on my phone. Um, this is a Atari Lynx 2 with a Raspberry Pi inside. So it's kind of a project I've been working on for a little bit, and uh, I'm almost done. I've got a few little things to finish, but uh, just kind of run through a quick demonstration here. From the outside, it looks just like a pretty stock uh, Lynx 2, except for on the back here, or the front, or the top where you've got, you still retain the original ports for the most part. I've got the volume controls, the uh, um, headphone jack, the Comlinks port. I do have a slightly drilled out micro USB in the original power jack location and then a tiny little slim switch in the brightness location. That's to power things on and off. On the uh, bottom here, you can see I've got the battery door. If you take the battery door off, the Raspberry Pi 2 is exposed right here, and you have the original power jack, the HDMI, and the AV out. Um, a bunch of wiring on the inside there to wire up the original uh, controls for the Lynx to the uh, Pi's GPIO headers. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And it boots up fairly quickly. Um, it's a pretty low resolution composite screen. Uh, it's a like a 3.5 inch backup LCD you can find on Amazon. It's uh, pretty common for like Raspberry Pi projects. It's pretty inexpensive, but when you're playing retro games, it actually looks pretty good. You can see it loads up Emulation Station. I'm running the latest version of RetroPie, and it comes into the emulator here. And let's see if I can get some better. Uh... Oh, that's bright. It's going to be really hard to show this, I think. Right, let's go ahead and I'll crank the volume up, and then I'll just go into like a. Nintendo emulator here, and there you go, you can see the, uh, you can hear the sound comes through the original speaker, and you can see that the original controls all work like they should to go ahead and select things. And let's just go ahead and find something to play here, and there's a lot of stuff on this one here. And it goes ahead and boots up the, uh, the ROM here. I've mapped the uh, see the A and B buttons. Um, the X and Y have been mapped to option one and uh, flip, and then start and select, or basically this is start is option two, select is the backlight button. And the off button I've actually wired up and uh, written some scripts to go ahead and if you hold it down for three seconds, it'll actually do a safe shutdown on the Raspberry Pi, which is important so you don't corrupt your... Uh, card. So you can see it's just kind of demoing here, but we'll go ahead and do a select, start, and yeah, it's actually running a little faster there. <laughs> and I'm not really going to be able to play this and actually uh, record it at the same time, but you can see that it actually all works like it should. You can pause it here. Um, you can hold down both buttons, like in uh, Emulation Station, to actually exit back to the main uh, GUI here, and then you can go back out and uh, go back to your emulator screen. And I've got a few things on here. The, the ironic part about this right now is that I don't have the uh, Lynx ROMs on here, which uh, obviously is probably the, the more important thing, being that this is a Lynx body. So <laughs> um, that would be next. Uh, the other thing is I've, I've done quite a bit of work to retain a lot of the original controls, so I've actually used a tiny bit of the original motherboard which here's the original motherboard and I've cut out the original audio section which gives me the uh, audio amplifier that I need to uh, run the speaker and have a headphone jack because the Raspberry Pi's audio is only line out and it doesn't have any control and I didn't want digital controls I wanted to use the original volume knob so it, it that works pretty good but the downside is that the original Lynx's uh, power was actually 9 volts and so by going to a 5 volt system the audio amplifier isn't very loud on the speaker, and that's a function of lower voltage and that the Lynx has a 16-ohm speaker. So I'm going to swap the Lynx's speaker out with an 8-ohm speaker. It should get a lot louder. Um, overall, I'm, I'm really happy with the project. Um, the other thing I'm planning on doing on the bottom here is building a kind of a panel right across here and uh, having two USB ports plugged into the original. That way, what I can use this for as well is I can plug this into the wall and uh, then plug this into my TV and, and hook up uh, actual wired controllers like, say, 
a uh, Nintendo USB controller and then be able to play all the retro things on the, uh, t the bigger screen versus having portable. It basically serves as kind of a dual purpose machine, portable and the uh, full on home console. Um, I guess some more technical details. Yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, I chose that just because it's faster, it runs more things, and since I'm going to be able to use it externally, I figured that would be great. Um, obviously, I have to have controllers with more buttons. The Lynx doesn't have enough buttons to really run like a lot of the Super NES stuff with uh, shoulder buttons. It, it can't do, you know, a lot of the PlayStation things. So you really need to have external controllers for that. Uh, another option is putting some Bluetooth uh, dongles inside here. The, the, the big issue is, is power. I mean, I'm using a 2500 milliamp uh, LiPo cell in there, and I'm using an Adafruit uh, PowerBoost 500 uh, charging controller. That's pretty slick. It uh, converts the LiPo 3.7 volt up to 5 volts. Um, it seems to have enough power to, to run everything uh, just fine. What I haven't tried is a full test of, I have a feeling that if you leave this all on in portable format and leave it plugged in, um, that it would actually outrun the battery eventually, like the, the charging circuit is only 500 milliamps, but I think the draw right now is higher than that. So my goal really is probably just to, to put those external USB ports and then maybe unplug the Wi-Fi dongle and unplug some of the other dongles in there. I actually have a keyboard dongle plugged in as well, which I've got this little Microsoft Arc keyboard, which you can kind of see here that if you hit F4, you can, that pops back to the console and then you can actually, you know, you can start doing working in the terminal if you want, but you can't read that tiny font on this screen. You really have to hook up an external monitor. Um, I would probably go ahead and uh, bump the font size up on this. I also need to bump the font up in Innovation Station, maybe get a, a little bit better uh, theme just to make it a little readable because this is a lower resolution composite display. Uh, it also is a little taller than the original Lynx, so it cuts off just a few millimeters. I'll probably adjust that in software to fix that. But overall, it's pretty slick. Uh, and, of course, the, the important thing, doing a safe shutdown, you hit the off button and hold this thing. And it should just go ahead and shut it down after about three seconds. And actually, it looks like it has issued the shutdown command. I'm not sure. If, yeah, so it actually did shut down back to the console here and you can go ahead and turn it off, but you, it actually works properly in, in uh, emulation station. If you hold it down, it'll actually just shut the whole thing down back to a blank screen and then you power it off with the, the display or the uh, power switch up top. Um, overall, yeah, a really fun project. I'm really happy with it. I'm just, like I said, some minor tweaks that I need to do. And then uh, I might build another one of these and I'm thinking about actually using the original battery tray. I, I don't know why I didn't really think of that before, but why not use the original battery tray um, put all the double A's in there and then uh, actually retain the original power jack and uh, just down convert everything to 5 volts from 9 volts. Uh, that would actually be better. I'd have more power to draw from for uh, voltage for the audio circuitry and uh, actually it would cut the cost and make it a little bit uh, easier to do in some ways. Uh, but then I wouldn't have all the stuff exposed in the bottom, which I actually kind of like, but I might consider doing that and maybe you know putting some external ports on the side and back, but I really like the idea of keeping this factory. Um, you can see the console slot obviously is doesn't have anything in the cartridge slot. You can see the uh, Raspberry Pi's pins right under there. I might put a little like plastic mesh screen under there to prevent anything from falling in there. I actually like that being open because it's good for airflow. Um, also, you've got the original little. Uh, I guess it's a, kind of the carrying loop handles. I unscrewed those two because they're metal and I didn't want them to ground anything out. It's actually kind of a happy coincidence that you can see the SD card right there. And I'm, I'm almost tempted that, man, if you just made a little tiny cut in that uh, case section right there, I could be able to eject the SD card from it. But you know what? It's not really a big deal. I probably don't need to service the SD card much, so it's really not a bear to open these. I mean, it's literally pull these rubber feet off and uh, take four screws out and the whole thing comes apart and then it'll just come right apart. Um, I might have to make another video with this open so that you guys can see the actual guts, but you can follow my progress on Atari Age under Cowdog360 uh, is my handle on there and uh, I've done quite a bit of uh, the blogging about it, I guess. 
far as telling you the details. This project obviously has been done a couple of times before, so a lot of people had their variants of it. I just kind of took a lot of those things together, and, and I just decided I, I wanted to try and go with a slightly more cleaner approach and uh, do it this way. So I'll stop rambling. I know this is a long video, but uh, thanks for watching, and uh, shoot me any comments or questions you have.